Let's make a pot holder with the pot holder loom. This is an 18 peg loom and we're going to make the padded basket weave pot holder design. It's a fun twist on a checkerboard with a spot of color in the center of each square. This reversible pot holder uses two colors and is an easy beginner project. You can find a detail of the chart on this design at Piglet's Pot Holder Patterns, and this is the padded basket weave 18 peg shared with permission under Creative Commons. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This pattern has written instructions and links to fully captioned right and left-handed video tutorials for your convenience, as well as the uh, link to the chart that we refer to for this pattern. So visit our link down in the video description below to jump to our blog. If you would like to purchase an ad-free version, uh, you can get that on our Ravelry and Etsy stores, but we will not be publishing the Creative Commons chart. There will be a link in that PDF though, and we will have fully written instructions for each uh, pattern that we make in this series. For materials, you're going to need your weaving loom for pot holders. This is a 3 8 inch spacing, and it has a um, more narrow spacing than some others. As long as you have 18 pegs across, you can work this pattern. Uh, you'll just have a slightly different size than the one I'm showing here today. This one has 72 pegs all around, so you have 18 on each end, and uh, and that multiplied by 4 is 72. This loom in particular is a Cindy Wood loom, and I'm working with their 3 8 small seven inch pot holder loom and it makes roughly a five by five inch square. It comes with your weaving tool. You're also going to need a crochet hook for binding off around the edge of your pot holder. And you're going to need 36 cotton loops for the seven inch loom. So get the loops that work with your loom. We're working with color A, which is 18 loops of yellow, and then color B, 18 loops of purple. I recommend a contrasting color to really make your design pop out. All right, let's begin. So we're gonna begin with the warp. We're gonna place all color A loops, which is yellow in this case, vertically from top to bottom, or you could place them bottom to top using all pegs. Doesn't matter which peg you put in first. Go ahead and do that. Pause your video if you need. Sometimes they have a little piece of fiber here and you might want to trim that off or you can wait to trim after you're done. So last few. All right, now that we have all of our warp on, we're going to begin our weaving pattern. I'm going to grab our color B and set it over here. And we're gonna begin with row one. This is a six row repeat. And uh, we're gonna begin with weaving under three and over three. So we're going under these very first three here. Make sure you're grabbing, uh, when I say three, I mean a pair um, where this is the, the loop. So we're going under an entire loop and I'm calling that one. So we're going one, two, three, these first three pegs under and then place it on that very first peg. In our case, I'm putting it with the uh, dark peg up here. And so we're going under three and over three and repeat again. I'm skipping those next three and I'm going under three, one, two, three, and over three, repeat again, under three, over three, and place on the very last peg here. So row two is going to weave under one and over one. So we're going to place our um, loop on our peg and go under one and over one, under one, over one, and continue repeating all the way across. So this is just like other pot holders, under and over. So all of your um, 
squares will look more like a, a the contrast A square, and then the second one will look like a contrast B square once we get uh, done with it. So you'll have a color pop in uh, your lighter color with the one we're weaving across, or a spot. all the way to the end and put that on. Double checking, make sure I didn't split anything. These first few uh, rows really establish your pattern, so make sure you've got that right. Now we're gonna move on to row three, and it's just like row one, we're gonna go under the first three. And I like to pull that under and then place it on my loop. And then over the next three, and then go under the next three, and keep going. I don't really need my, um, my tool for this um, until it gets towards the end. It's just easier with my fingers. All right, you can see that we have some squares established. See that purple? You don't really need to push these all the way to the end, but I just want you to see that it looks like we have what's going to be a yellow square, purple, yellow, purple, yellow, purple. All right, so now we want to work on rows four through uh, six, and we're gonna weave over three, under three. Grab our loop. We're going over these first three and under the next three. And they're easier to grab because you can see that color block from before. Go right to where that accent or that um, contrasting color is. And then place it. All right. Grab our next one. And now we're going to um, go um, over one under one and repeat that across. So we're going over that first one, so I'm just gonna go into the second and then place that loop and continue. Pause your video at any time that you need. Make sure you're filling up one by one, you're not skipping any pegs. All right, last one in this row, and you're going to repeat what you did on row four onto row six. We're gonna weave over three, under three. So there's those first three, under these next three, and repeat. And there you have the first six rows. You can really see those blocks really well. So continue by repeating uh, rows one through six two more times, and this will be filled out the next time you see me, and we will begin by binding off. So I'm gonna just do this very next row, row one, just to show you establish it again. Again, we're going under three, place that loop, over three, under three, over three, under three, over three, and you can see that start to establish again. All right, pause your video. Okay, so I wanna stop short of my last um, three rows and show you how to use the weaving tool and because I was able to do uh, the rest of this with my hands, but I think on the last few, it's harder to do. So I'm gonna show you, um, especially a trick in this particular pattern, um, the uh, fourth, and sixth row are exactly the same. So I'm actually gonna pull them through twice and leave spacing and then I'll work on the fifth row. Uh, so um, to do that, I'm gonna grab the short end of my weaving tool and come in from the opposite side and we're gonna be pulling our loop all the way across here. So I'm gonna go underneath these first, um, well, the last uh, three loops, just go in between and just got the, the hook down like this and then come up those three and then push down those next three, go under and over three, this whole way across until you get to the beginning three. You can see it come out. Now we can grab our loop on that hook and then turn it downward and go underneath those next three loops and we can place our loop on uh, this peg here and then pull it across. You just got this flat, you just can pull all the way across and then pull up and then place it on the same loop all the way across here. 
you can actually go ahead and do that again. And then we're gonna place it on the last peg and then all you have to do is weave over under one across for the second to last peg. Let's do this again. So it's already really well established. And do that again. And you could have actually pulled both of them through at the same time and do it at the same time here, but we're just gonna pull through, lift up and place it. There we go. And you've got a gap and we're going to need to put in um, this one here. So we're going um, over and then under, over one, under one. So over this top one and under the next one. and pull it through. And you can also use a crochet hook to do this as well. So that's that first part. And then um, you can go through a couple at a time. Uh, we want to pull them like this. So we have um, over, and this is, see, I've got the wrong thing here. So this is over, under, over, under, over, under. So I'm gonna go underneath here and pull through these two. All right, I think you have the idea. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna continue uh, weaving this and pause your video and I will see you at the end. See you in a moment. Now that you have your complete design, you're going to want to bind off with a crochet hook. You'll begin by starting at one corner and I like to grab that corner, pick it up and go up to the next row. So I'm grabbing the one on the end here and going up here at the next corner and looping through and going to the next one and looping through. So you're taking the back loop over the loop that you just picked up, so pick up one, pull it off, lift up and over, and then go to the next, pick it up, and pull through, and continue. And you can even pick one of these loops up every so often and place it back on the loom and it will continue with uh, tension as you go around so whoop, show you again pick up this loop we'll do the next one then we'll place it back on Loop over and grab one of these loops and place it back on and it creates tension as you go around so that these loops don't uh, start popping off and then you can fix that in the end. I'll show you how to fix it. It'll pull that loop a little bit, but it can be adjusted for even tension when you're done. But continue working all the way around and every so often place one back on your loom. I'll go ahead and come to the first corner and show you uh, how to continue. Just as a reminder, and then you'll go all the way until the last few stitches and I'll meet you there. So let's come to the end of this straight away here. Okay, I just did the last one. We're gonna turn it and pick up the corner loop and pull through. And I just kind of put my finger down here and do the next one and pull through. So we did all the yellows on this side. Uh, we can put that back on for tension. And then now we're doing all the purple. Just pick one of these loops up and place it and keep going. All right, so uh, continue all the way around, pause your video when you get to this area and we'll see you there to finish it off. All right, I'm down to the end and you can see it's stretched here because I've um, put all of those back on the loom. So I'm gonna have to um, fix them after. Uh, but for now, uh, we're down to the last two loops, pulling through and this very last one, pull that through. And then we can pull all of these off of the loom. So 
So I'm just going to leave that loop nice and loose and go to these and just pull through. So there's a tighter loop here on the front and I can just pull that through for tension. Use your hook or your fingers. And this one on the end, I'm just going to use my tool and pull through to get the loops to the corner for a nice tidy corner uh, because of the way my square was. You see how it was pulled? Uh, and then make this an outside corner. I want to make sure that this square looks more in the purple side. So I'm just pulling that tension out. Because we had the over three, under three, um, we really want to make sure that that square looks like a solid purple here in the corner. Fix my tension on some of these. Make sure this outside corner really looks like it's part of the yellow, or contrast A, color A here. There's that yellow square. Continue working all the way around until I get to my last loose loop, which is this one. And there we go. So you can leave this loop or you can um, tie a knot in it. I like to pull it back through uh, another loop of the same color. Let's see, let's do that one more time. I'm going to go through this one here, pull through my loop, and then go through another area. to get it really in there. I don't like to leave a loop on my pot holders. You might, um, but I don't hang mine up. So I just want mine to be nice and flat and stored in a drawer until I use them. So that's what this one looks like. I hope you have enjoyed making this pot holder. This is the padded basket weave and it does have like a really nice sort of pad to it. It's very dimensional and nice and soft uh, pillowy top of these squares with a little punch of color in there. I hope you enjoyed it. Join us next time for more pot holder weaving here on Good Knit Kisses. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.